Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, it is... It is what? Tuesday? Tuesday morning. High energy, let's go. Running late, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Irritated, I am irritated. Uh, good morning, DC, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you, good to see you, good morning. Peace to me, yes, that's what I need, I need peace. Chicago, good morning. French Lick, Irving, Texas, Joe Nash, good morning. The Murphys are here, good morning. Veronica Moore in California, good morning. Get out the boat, walk on the water, Tuesday flow. Let me button my buttons. I see my buttons are unbuttoned. Got to button the buttons. Good morning. Arkansas, Cheryl Batts. Hey, Cheryl Batts. That's a, that's a long lost name. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? North Carolina. Good morning. Glenwood. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hi. Deerfield, Illinois. Kenya, by way of Deerfield, Illinois. Okay, good morning. Thank you for inviting friends and followers. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release a heart. So please just keep tap, tap, tapping away. Thank you so much. Springfield, Illinois, Chicago, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Cancun. Wow. Is that the silver anniversary couple? Cancun. <laughs> God bless you guys. High Energy Tuesday. Let's go. Beautiful morning. Beautiful morning. Okay. Not so beautiful here, but okay. Wherever you are, it's beautiful. That's wonderful. I'm glad it's beautiful where you are. Oh. Daughter called this morning, said our grandson was sick. Asked me to pick up our granddaughter. Of course, that set everything into a frenzy, trying to get out of the house, get over and pick her up. And of course, when I picked her up, she hadn't eaten breakfast, so I've got to run her through Dunkin' Donuts and get her something and get her to school so I can get here. So it's just been rush, 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 rush this morning. But here we are. So take a deep breath. <sighs> calm. <laughs> we calm down. We calm down. All right. I want to talk to you about first things today. Doing something for the first time doing things that have never been done before, doing something that has not been done before, doing something that other people have wanted to do but they've never done it, but now the call of God is on your life to get it done. So in order for this to happen, you need a big idea, you need a vision from God, you need a revelation from God. Once you have that, it's important that you exercise some big faith, some strong faith, that you move in a high degree of courage because you're going to have to take some risks, you're going to have to increase your capacity for enlarged vision in your life. You're going to need that. You're going to need covenant relationships that will stand with you and support you in the effort of doing something that hasn't been done before. It's going to be important that you have those covenant friendships with you. You're going to need a breakthrough mindset. A mindset that says, I'm breaking through no matter what. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to hinder me. I am going through. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit until I see success. You're going to need to have a circumcised heart, which is going to prevent you from being caught in the position of having a hard heart. And you're going to need to have circumcised ears. Circumcised ears <clears throat> are going to keep you from moving in the place of dullness of hearing, as the scripture says. You're also going to need a strong prayer life because your prayer life is going to connect you with creator God. And as you're connected with him in prayer, he's going to release his creativity into your life. And you need intimate worship because through intimate worship, you draw close to God so that you can tap into his heart and his mind. Now, if you want to get the results in your life that most people will not get, 
you have to do the things that most people will not do. And to do the things that most people will not do means that you're going to have to think in a way that most people do not think. It means you're going to have to move past the point where other people quit. Whatever that looks like, wherever that is, wherever that line is drawn, where you see other people attempting to do something that hasn't been done before and they reach a certain point and they quit, you, my friend, are going to have to have a breakthrough spirit and you're going to have to go past that place where other people quit. You're always going to have to deal with your fears. To do something that hasn't been done before, you're going to have to face your own fears, deal with them, address them, and overcome them. You know, you may, you may be asking yourself the question, well, what if I do it wrong? What if I do it wrong? What if I make a mistake? What if people are right and, and it, it isn't going to work? That's what they say. What if it's not going to work? Well, listen, I want to encourage you with this. If it's never been done before, there's no wrong way to do it. Oh, I like that one. If it's never been done before, there's no wrong way to do it. Obedience is going to lead you into the place of success, and courage is going to be your creativity put into action. But understand, it's okay if you make mistakes. Understand, if you do something wrong, it's going to be all right. Because if it's never been done before, there's no wrong way to do it. So tap into God's heart and mind, follow him, exercise obedience to the will of God, the word of God, the purpose of God, the vision that God has placed in your heart, the dream that he has placed in your heart. Exercise obedience to that, and your obedience is going to open up the way for you to see prosperity and success in whatever you put your hands on. That's what the scripture says. You're going to have creativity and action as you exercise a high level of courage. So I want to, I want to, um, I want to encourage you to start by experimenting. When you're doing something that hasn't been done before, I think it's wise for you to experiment. So you're going to run across people who are supposedly doing something better than you're doing it, or they're living a better life than you're living, whatever the case may be. So when you run across those people, discover what they are doing, discover how they are doing it, but don't copy them. Don't copy them. Instead, take what you learn from them and innovate. Take what you learn from their example, the lessons that you learn from what you see them doing, and begin to work around that until you take it to another level, until you take it to another dimension, and you make it your own thing, where it is something fresh, it is something unique, it is something distinctive. And when it is distinctive, it's going to draw attention towards you. One guy decided to replace the meat in his taco with Korean barbecue. And he decided he would only make the location of his truck known via Twitter. He created a food truck frenzy in the food industry. A girl decided to make her own ice cream because she didn't like the flavors at the store. Now she has a waiting list for her $50 a month ice cream delivery service. You pay 50 bucks a month and she'll deliver ice cream to you. Unique, fresh, distinctive flavors that are drawing attention to her business life. These people took what something, what somebody else was doing and they innovated and they tweaked it and they released something that no one else was doing. They released something that no one else had done. In the days of Jesus, the Jewish rabbis had disciples. John the Baptist had disciples. Scripture says that. But Jesus innovated that concept of discipleship. He took 12 men and he took discipleship to another dimension as he prepared his disciples to impact the entire world. And on top of that, when he left, he poured his spirit into their lives to empower them to do what nobody else could do. 
to empower them to do what no one else had ever done before. That's what Jesus did with his disciples in contrast to the Jewish rabbis and their disciples. Then the other thing I want to mention to you is to do what others say is impossible. To do something that hasn't been done before, you're going to have to cross that line that says this is impossible, the limit is here, and you can't go any farther. You're going to have to cross that line. Watch this. Everything is impossible until somebody does it. Everything is impossible until somebody does it. Leading up to 1954, no track runner had ever broken the four-minute barrier in the one-mile run. They had tried, they came close, but no one had ever done it. In 1954, an Englishman named Roger Bannister ran the mile in three minutes and 59 point something seconds. For the first time in history, a man broke that four minute barrier. Once Roger Bannister broke that barrier, there were a number of other runners that also ran a sub four minute mile in the next 12 and 13 months after Roger Bannister did it. It took that one pioneer, that one forerunner, to do something that everybody said was impossible. And he took what was impossible and he made it to be possible. That's what you're going to do when you do something that no one else has ever done before. In the last 60 years, the mile record has been lowered by 17 seconds. Think about that. Isn't that amazing? Because one man did what no one else had ever done before. Think about Moses at the Red Sea. He did what was thought to be impossible. He parted the waters and an entire nation of people crossed on dry ground. Joshua at the Jordan River. He did what was thought to be impossible. He stopped the flow of the river so that Israel could cross the riverbed on dry ground and go into the land of Canaan. Think of Joshua at Jericho, doing what had never been done before. We're going to march around a city, we're going to shout, we're going to blow some horns, and when we do so, the walls are going to come down. Amazing. What was impossible became possible. Think about Joshua needing more time to fight his enemy and defeat his enemy. So he spoke to the sun and he commanded it to stand still in the sky. And nature obeyed the word of this commanding general. Amazing. Elisha made an iron axe head float on top of the water so that a workman could get his axe together, get his axe together, so that a workman could get his axe together so that he could finish, <laughs> so that he could finish the job, so that he could finish his work. Jesus was with over 5,000 hungry people, took a little boy's lunch, a few pieces of fish and bread, fed over 5,000 people and picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers. Amazing. Jesus, in the middle of the storm, walked on water for Pete's sake. Come on. And he did it for Pete's sake. He walked on the water. Incredible. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they thought he was a ghost. Now, how in the heck could this be happening? How could, how could a human being be walking on top of water? But then on top of that, Peter gets out of the boat, and he does the same thing. He walked on the water. Everybody talks about how he sank. But remember, before he sank, he was walking on the water. The water was holding up his body weight. He was walking on the water like you're walking on your floor right now, doing what everybody else said was impossible. And so 
I, I guess I'm here today to build your faith. I'm here to encourage your faith to do what has not been done before, to do what everybody else says cannot be done, to do what everybody else says is impossible to do. No, if God is in it, if his hand is on your life, if he put the dream and the vision inside of you, it is fully, absolutely possible for you to do what is in your heart. It's fully possible. So today, I want to encourage you to go forth and do what hasn't been done before. Find somebody that's doing something similar to what you want to do. Learn the lesson. Innovate. Build on top of it. Take it to another level. Take it to another dimension. And then begin to do what other people say is impossible to do. God bless you so much. Thanks for being with me. I'm grateful for you. I love you. I apologize for being irritated when I started. <laughs> God bless you guys. Open doors in front of you today. Opportunities are opening up. People are coming into your life. Resources are coming. Money is in your hands. Favor with God and man coming on your life. Do the impossible. Do what has not been done before. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.